Hello, I'm David Hardesty. And in this lecture, we will learn some of the basics of the business of electronic commerce. A basic understanding of the internet and electronic commerce, that is e-commerce, is a critical first step in learning about the issues that arise in the taxation of e-commerce. In this lecture, we will examine the basics of electronic commerce, focusing on the infrastructure and methods of doing business online. Let's start with the internet itself. The internet is a worldwide network of linked computers connected by telephone, cable, fiber optic lines, and the airwaves. Each computer is a separate data center accessible by anyone who is also linked to the internet. The internet has no central control. The overall connection facility, the backbone, is managed by a combination of public and private organizations around the world. Accordingly, the Internet is not like local area networks, which often take the form of a hub with spokes. In fact, the Internet is more like a spider web. In this course, we will often come across web servers. What is a web server? The content of the Internet is contained on hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of computers known as web servers. Web servers house all of the information accessible th through the internet. A web server is an ordinary computer that is connected to the internet and which runs special software that makes the content housed on that computer accessible through the internet. The content housed on a web server is ordinarily accessed by a user through a website. A server may also contain information that is directly accessed through the internet using various other communications technologies. Now let's talk about websites. A website is the most common way of accessing information on the internet. A website is a portal to the information contained on web servers. A website is made up of a group of related files created and linked together by software running on a web server and sent over the internet to users. The website allows users to access the information on the web server by pointing and clicking on menus and links on the various pages of the website. We will be discussing the nature of websites in great detail in another, in another lecture. Let's look at email, which is another type of electronic commerce. Email is a name given to the transfer of information from one user to another electronically via the internet. The information transferred via email may be text only or text accompanied by sound and or graphics. Internet telephony is a form of telephone service that employs the technology of the internet. Telephone service using the internet referred to variously as internet telephony voice over internet protocol, VOIP, or IP telephony, permits use of the internet as a telephone service, that is, a network for carrying person-to-person -person voice and video communications. The service works by digitizing a sender's words and transmitting them in data packets over the internet, after which they are reassembled into audio files that the receiver can listen to or watch. 
Some types of Internet telephony services employ regular telephones on both ends of the conversation. Some types of telephony use computers at both ends. A good example of this is Skype, which can send both audio and video communication between computers connected to the Internet. Other types of telephony employ a computer on one end and a regular telephone uh, on the other. Internet access service is a service that allows users to access the Internet. Access providers are commercial companies that sell access to the Internet for a fee. An access provider is ordinarily an Internet service provider or online service provider. Fees in the United States are ordinarily flat monthly fees. Fees outside the United States may be flat fees or may be on a per-use basis. Internet access includes any means by which users are connected to the Internet, which includes cell phones, iPhones, to uh, access the Internet. We will now briefly discuss domain names. A domain name is a name, word, or phrase that is registered as the address of a specific website. For example, Amazon.com is a domain name. When a user types in the do domain name, a signal is sent to a domain name registry, which includes a record of all of the registered domain, main, do domain names and the websites they are associated with. The registry returns a code that directs the user to the website associated with the domain name. All of this activity is, of course, unseen by the user. A user ordinarily accesses the Internet using a browser. A browser is a software program that resides on the user's computer. This software takes website software code, text, audio, and video files, received by the user through the Internet, and from these files constructs a web page that the user sees. One of the most common Internet browsers is Internet Explorer. This is a program that is resident on the, computers, on the user's computer and which takes the website files received by the user and constructs web pages and other objects that appear on the user's computer. Digital products are unique to the Internet. A digital product is an item that can be purchased online, delivered electronically, and saved by the buyer on his or her computer. Examples of digital products are software, music, publications, books, and videos, all of which can be purchased online delivered electronically, and saved on the buyer's computer. We refer to such products as digital because they involve digital data files delivered electronically. Online services are also unique to the Internet. An online service is a service purchased and delivered online and which does not involve digital files being saved to the user's computer. Online services includes videos viewed online and games played online and chat rooms. Digital products are downloaded by the buyer. A product is downloaded when the digital files making up the product are transferred electronically from the seller's web server to the user's computer and saved on the user's computer. Users may download, that is, receive electronic transfer of, 
any digitized information from the Internet. Ordinarily, if a user can access a website, the user can download anything on that website. Some websites are password protected, but most are not. Software, images, music, video, books, articles, newspapers, and database information are all frequently downloaded. The download generally occurs when an individual using a browser clicks on a download button or link on a web page. This initiates a request to transfer digitized information from the server to the user's computer. The digitized information is physically copied from one computer to the other. A key concept in electronic commerce is the license. Many digital products are sold under licenses. The purpose of the license is to restrict the buyer's ability to legally duplicate the product and sell or give it to someone else. For example, software sold online is ordinarily sold subject to a shrink wrap license, which prohibits the buyer from legally making more than a few copies of the software for the buyer's own use. Some software exists only on the Internet. Internet-based software is software meant to be accessed and used only online. For example, certain games such as Second Life are made to be accessed and used only online. The sale of the access of such software is considered the sale of an online service because the buyer does not acquire any digital files that can be saved on the buyer's computer. Most of the commerce taking place online involves non-digital product sales. Non-digital product sales are sales of tangible products such as clothing, electronics, etc., where the sale is transacted online and the products are delivered through the mail. As we will find in this course, such sales are treated for tax purposes substantially the same as traditional mail order sales. A major internet only activity is the online auction. Online auctions such as eBay.com constitute a major amount of product sales taking place online. From the buyer's point of view, an online auction is just another way of making online purchases. Likewise, from the seller's point of view, an online auction is simply another sales channel. The auctioneer, such as eBay.com, is viewed as providing a service to the seller. In most cases, the auctioneer is not considered the seller. Another major online activity is advertising. Advertisers view web pages as platforms for advertising products and services. Ads take the form of banners, ordinarily at the top or sides of pages. A person browsing the web page clicks on the advertising banner and is taken to the advertiser's page. Website owners charge advertisers for placing ads on their web pages. The website owner may be paid based on the number of individual people who view the ads. Alternatively, the website owner can be paid based on the number of people who click on the ads and are taken to the advertiser's web page. Clicking on an ad is referred to as a click-through, and website owners may be paid based on the number of click-throughs. 
Our last topic is the affiliate program. An affiliate program is another way of being paid for carrying an ad on a web page. An affiliate program is the method of paying a commission to other unrelated website owners in exchange for their carrying ads. For example, webco.com, a website devoted to recipes, may have an article discussing the merits of different kinds of cooking utensils. While the article may objectively discuss the pluses and minuses of various brands on the same page, there may be a banner ad linking to cookbooks carried by Amazon.com. If the reader clicks on an ad, goes to Amazon.com, and then buys a book, Amazon may pay a commission to the owner of webco.com.